Hello friends and welcome back to the channel. So over the weekend, I completed the Come Out to Play Karina's Challenge, which is defeating Green Goblin and Abyss of Legends with a team of Spider-Verse and Symbiote and Sinister Six champs. And since I didn't stream it, I wanted to do a, an overview, kind of talk about my team, uh, quickly go through each individual fight. Uh, so on screen is the team that I went with. Uh, Anti-Venom, Null, and Spider-Ham are all at rank 3, and then Stealthy and Sim Supreme are both rank 5, 5 stars. Uh, in terms of SIG level, I want to briefly talk about two of these champs. Uh, first, my Anti-Venom is SIG 200. Um, he's definitely going to perform better in this specific challenge if he's awakened. But I don't think that you need him at high sig unless you're trying to get the Darkhawk solo with him. Uh, for the other fights I used him on, high sig really not that necessary. Um, the other one is Null, who is at sig 50. And I'd say that for him, a higher sig is definitely better uh, because it decreases his ramp up time. And then in Abyss, you're going to use fewer hits to get him ramped up, which means more hits uh, on the damage phase once you activate Corruption. All right, so let's uh, let's take a look at the path here. Switch over to that. So for my path, I took this one here, which I have highlighted. Uh, it's almost entirely uh, path three, and then cutting inside uh, onto path two, I think it is, after the champion to get up to Green Goblin. So uh, go through these, um, you know, as quickly as I can, fight by fight. So first off, uh, at the top there, Darkhawk. I uh, sold this fight with Anti-Venom. You can also get the solo with Null here, uh, but I had done this fight before uh, and recorded it with Anti-Venom, so I decided to do it again. A little differently for me this time, uh, without the Spider-Man 2099 or Doc Ock synergy. Um, so I had to kind of play around the power steal. It's not too bad. Uh, if you've done this fight with like Torch or Void uh, or even Mr. Fantastic, it's very similar to that. Uh, once you get your Spectre debuffs up, you really want to try and have Darkhawk throw his special two when you are close to or at a bar of power. Uh, and then you can do like a special intercept with your special one to knock him down. So this is going to give you your biggest source of heal reversal because you'll have the petrified debuff on him from your special one. And then his regen buff won't be staggered by Anti-Venom's heavy attack. Um, this is the first fight again. So no real need to use revives here unless you get super close and then and then dying and are frustrated. Uh, probably better to just quit out and you know come back in and try again. All you're using up is energy. All right, next up is uh, Luke Cage. One revive on this fight, and I was really, really close to getting the solo. Uh, my first attempt actually took uh, over 30 minutes to do, I think. Uh, I guess I was in the zone, you know. Uh, basic strategy here, get your slow applied. When he's close to going unstoppable, refresh it with the SP2, and then reload your web cartridges as needed with your SP3, uh, and then use an SP1 to apply the precision passive uh, as soon as you can. Uh, you're going to be dexing a lot, uh, so a single special one is actually going to last you the entire fight. Uh, the same precision passive for that 30-minute first attempt, it lasted the entire the entire time, and it wasn't really close to running out when I finally uh, got hit and, and died. Um, since you're going to be using primarily special threes in that fight just to reload your cartridges, uh, you may want to consider turning on like Ouchie Masteries, which uh, will probably shorten the fight considerably. Uh, in hindsight, that's something that I wish I would have done. Um, and then once you run out of charges, uh, you do kind of have to survive the power gain. Uh, but after that, the fight actually becomes much easier, in my opinion, because Luke becomes very aggressive. Uh, he'll let you intercept him all day, uh, and he'll throw his specials immediately, too. So, again, one revive here. Um, I definitely could have had the solo. Uh, I missed one intercept, uh, and he pounded me. So, you know, that's how it goes sometimes. All right, third fight. Old Man Logan, probably the easiest fight on the path. Uh, soloed him with Anti-Venom. Just get your Spectres up in the first 20 hits. Uh, if you need to know how to do that, uh, check out the guide that I have on how to use Anti-Venom. Uh, and then from there, just stick to like Parry Heavy, throw your SP1 when you have the power for it. Uh, no need to reset your debuff potency uh, when you're above 50 combo here. You'll have plenty of hits uh, available to get him down if you stick to like the slow play with the Parry Heavy. You'll be fine. He he'll be uh, His healing will be reversed and he'll be down in no time. Uh, next up was Havoc. Uh, I actually turned Ouchies on for Null, got him down in one revive. Null's, <laughs> Null's sustainability in this fight is pretty ridiculous. Like, you'll be healing from Liquid Courage um, and from the Plasma debuffs that Havoc puts on you, and you probably won't even notice, won't notice when, when Detonation hits you. Uh, so strategy here was to reparry and heavy, or if he decide to, to try and heavy into your block, just heavy counter him 
with your own heavy instead. Uh, work your way up to about 60 ish living abyss debuffs there, there's a bit of like a, a a balance game there you don't want to have too many living abyss debuffs because then you don't have enough hits remaining on the back end uh, to do your actual damage so uh 50 to 60 is is pretty good i would say um and again this is where null's signature level is going to come into play the higher the sig the more you're going to start out with uh, and the faster you're going to be able to get to you know your, your ideal number uh whatever that's going to be Toss your SP3, get the big damage for Corruption. Um, so Null's Instant Bleeds, uh, they will make Havoc's Plasma Detonation go a bit bonkers. Uh, but again, you know, he is an absolute beast in this fight, and uh, you'll survive it just fine. Don't worry about it. Uh, moving on to Dormammu, I took uh, this fight with Spider-Ham. I'm really bad at playing without Dexterity on, uh, so I brought Ham specifically for this fight. Uh, his degen resistance actually came in very handy. It was two revives, but definitely could have been one if Dormammu had been more cooperative. Uh, I think on my first run, I threw the SP3 when I had like, you know, the 25 power stings ready. And then Dormammu just sat there holding his block until they all expired. So that, that felt pretty bad. Um, you can also use Null here. Um, he has the degen resistance as well, and his heavies have true accuracy. But you're really going to have to be on your toes once you trigger Corruption because that evade chance is going to be 10% rather than 1% since uh, Dorm has class advantage. So, All right, next up we have uh, Joseph Fixit. This absolutely should have been a solo. I'm still kicking myself about it. I forgot to turn Despair back on after the Dormammu fight. Um, I was lucky enough that, that Joe, uh, he drew hearts on my first go. Um, and then like halfway through the fight, I'm like, why isn't, why isn't the heal reversal like doing as much damage as I, as I think it should. And then I remembered I, I'd forgotten to switch my masters back. So, uh, I actually ended up running out of hits with anti-venom when, when he was at like 5% or something. Uh, so I just cleaned up the fight with no, no revives on this fight, but I did lose anti-venom. Um, so I did have to revive him on the next fight which is Mordo. Mordo is a huge jerk and definitely one of the most annoying fights in, in any Abyss Path. Um, very, very uncooperative AI. I uh, went in with Ham first, did a decent chunk un until uh, I took a special three, revived Anti-Venom from the previous fight, used his Decelerates to turn off Mordo's Evade, but again, Mordo, you know, loves to hold those specials, uh, died to a special three there, uh, went in with Null, same thing, you can see the, the pattern developing here. Uh, and then at that point, I think I used a team revive, uh, went through the same same list of champs again, finally got him down. Super, super annoying fight. Uh, but one really, really important thing I want to mention here, if you take nothing else away from this video, uh, it should be this. The synergy that Null has with all symbiotes actually prevents you from instantly dying to a special three in the Abyss. And this is extra amazing for Anti-Venom in particular because he can use the Indestructible to tank the special three. And since special threes can't crit, he will actually end up healing up almost all of the damage from the special three anyway. Um, so in, I think, both of my uh, runs with Anti-Venom against Mordo, I, I took a special three, and then it basically did nothing. Like, I healed up, like, right away. It was it was really, really funny to, to see happen. So definitely keep that in mind uh, for, for Anti-Venom and also for Sim Supreme as well. Uh, next up, we have Venom the Duck. This was an easy solo with Sim Supreme. I uh, had four out of five Mystic Dispersion on. It was just fine. I don't, you know, five is five out of five is, is great. Uh, if you don't have that, four out of five works just great. Um, just throw the SP3 when he has all the buffs from his special one, rinse and repeat. Uh, I think the fight took about 10 or 11 minutes total. Man, if we didn't have that SP3 skip button, uh, it probably would have been like at least double that. So big shout out to uh, Kabam Zero for coming in clutch with that SP3 skip. Uh, next up, Howard the Duck. This was one revive with Null. Same strategy as before. Uh, turned Ouchies back on. Used Heavies only. Built up around 60, 60 Living Abyss debuffs. And then Litter Rip. Uh, easy peasy. Um, you know, I wasn't... I didn't really have to worry about the... Uh, the whatever the... The degen damage that he places on you. Uh, it's like 50-50 for that. Or the regen. I can't remember what it's called off the top of my head. Uh, but just be prepared for it and, and parry him to turn it off. And, and you'll be fine. 
Uh, next up, Hyperion. Hyperion was one revive with Sim Supreme. Surprisingly, very cooperative. Um, I'm not sure if you can solo this fight uh, with Sim Supreme uh, because, like, your main source of damage with him is the bleeds, um, and you need to get a lot of hits to get those like ticking down on on your opponent. But um, either way, uh, one revive, perfectly fine for me. I was happy with that. Second to last fight was the champion. This should have been one revive. Ended up being two because I got caught by an evade. Overall, pretty simple fight. Uh, if you know how to fight the champion, there's really nothing special going on here. Uh, and then last but not least, we come to Green Goblin. Uh, so this took me three revives, but in hindsight, I actually think it could be fewer. Uh, and there's one specific thing that I wish I had done differently, uh, and that is my mastery setup. So um, while you, if you're using Null for this fight, you should absolutely turn on Ouchies, right? Uh, just for the extra damage. But one thing that I didn't do that I wish I had done uh, is turn off all of my precision mastery. So pre lesser precision and precision, just turn them off. Uh, if you want to use the points from cruelty and lesser cruelty elsewhere, that, that's fine too. Um, the reason being is that in this fight, your non-crits are actually going to be doing a lot more damage than your crits. Uh, so you will want to crit as little as possible. And this is going to increase your overall damage like quite a bit. Um, because remember, Null's instant bleeds in Corruption are a percentage of damage dealt by the hit. So more hit damage, more bleed damage, um, and more non-crits equals, oh, you know, you see where I'm going with this. So um, I definitely think that doing that probably would have saved me one, maybe even two revives on that fight. Not sure. Definitely one, maybe two uh, overall. So... So overall, uh, I used 12 single revives and one team revive. Only a handful of potions here uh, just to top up. And then best of all, no units spent. Um, really, this challenge went way better than what I expected for myself. And I was uh, extremely happy with, with kind of how it, how it turned out. So uh, anyways, folks, that's going to do it for this one. If you have any questions, be sure to pop them in the comments below. Hit that sub button for me, and as always, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you again next time.